so many toss-up races, every vote in tomorrow's midterms are critical. But talk show host Tavis Smiley predicts a low turnout among some key groups. I said a couple of weeks ago on national television, and I stand by the game today, two days in advance of these elections, that there is nothing to inspire African Americans to turn out in huge numbers, nothing to inspire Hispanics to turn out in huge numbers. Joining me now, Julie Reginsky, former political advisor to New Jersey Senator Frank Lautenberg and a Fox News contributor, David Avella, president of GOPAC, and joining us from our sister network, Fox Business Network's Charles Payne, host of Making Money with Charles Payne. David, I'm going to start with you because you're sitting in the middle today. Does Tavis Smiley have a point? Why are African Americans, in his mind, and Latinos, they have no inspiration to go to the polls tomorrow? In Atlanta, in Georgia, 13% higher turnout among African American voters this year than there was in 2010, and in fact, it may rival 2012. Huh. And so, there are many reasons for African American voters and Hispanic Americans to be uh, inspired, voters to be inspired if they want to change the direction of the country. And the question isn't really uh, in Georgia what percentage of African Americans turn out; it's what percentage does Nunn and and Carter not get because they're voting for the Republican. And we see examples after example in the country of traditional Democratic voters who are pulling the lever for Republicans this year. Just last week, we saw millennials want to uh, support Republicans that being in change. Congress. Yep, that did change from just a couple of years ago. Charles, how do you see the comments by Tavis Smiley? I see them really being very narrow-minded, almost ignorant, uh, in the sense that if, if a white person told black people, the topics aren't for you this time around, skip it. I mean, they kind of think about that. For me, the midterm elections in 2016 are probably will be the most critical in a lot of people's lifetimes right now, Why? because we're at a path right now in this country where we can keep going down this path towards that European-style, welfare utopian world where we have high taxes, we belittle the rich, and we just stay stagnant, or we can kind of go back to our roots, pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. That's something every single American, no matter what nationality, what color, what gender, gender you are, you should be concerned about because this will make or break America for the next decades or so. If you were standing on the stage with Charles to debate that, what would you say back, Julie? <laughs> that sounds pretty good, you know, inspirational <laughs> speech there, Charles. Uh, look, I would say that Charles and, and David, to some extent, have a point. I, I completely disagree with what Tavis Smiley said. If you look at turnout, you look at early numbers, African Americans are coming out at a higher rate. Uh, today in places like North Carolina with a very, very tight Senate contest than they did in 2010. So they mm. are inspired to come out. And to say that African Americans haven't been given a reason to come out, African Americans want the same thing the rest of us do. They want better jobs. They want better health care. They want better education. And they have to take a look and see which of the two parties gives them ah. the priorities that they want to aspire to. And it looks like they actually they disagree with what Tavis Smiley said. They do, they do seem to be coming out, as David said, in higher numbers. Okay. Yep. You all agreed on that one. I'm not so sure about this. <laughs> Large number of early voters are making their voices heard. 16.4 million ballots already cast in 31 states. Several key states, more people are voting than ever before. Take a look at Colorado. Republicans have an eight-point lead with 40.5% of the vote, according to the New York Times. Early votes in North Carolina have Democrats, though, leading by nearly 16 points. They have 47.6% of the vote. So, Julie, let me start back with you again. That's good news for Republicans in Colorado, good news for Democrats in North Carolina. Yeah, Colorado's weird uh, this year because it's the first time they have all vote, all mail voting. You actually now completely vote by mail in Colorado, so these polls are kind of hard to predict because we don't know what we're dealing with here. Uh, in places like North Carolina, absolutely right. Look, the Democrats have spent the past few cycles building an amazing ground game, and that includes an amazing vote-by-mail program. I'm involved in some of the elements of that. Uh, certainly people like me are involved in other elements of it. Okay. So to that extent, this is something the Democratic Party is focused on. I think the Republican Party is catching up, but not quite this cycle. Well, then how, but how do you explain Colorado then, David? Because they're ahead by 100,000 votes. Well, uh, uh, Senator Udall's own press secretary said it well. Cory Gardner is the best U.S. Senate candidate in the country. <laughs> <laughs> the U.S. Uh, Senate majority will be decided out of Colorado. And you look at what's happening right now, and Republicans are turning in, as the uh, stat just showed, Republicans are turning in more ballots than Democrats. Mm -hmm. Unaffiliated voters are in the areas that traditionally vote Republican, which is to our favor. And uh, looking at the everyday numbers of ballots being turned in, Democrats yep. are coming out at lower numbers. And let me just add one last thing. Okay. The snow and the cold that is now affecting Colorado today will hurt both turnouts. There's more than ours.
Mars because we've already got 100,000. Now he's a meteorologist, lead. too. <laughs> All right, Charles, do you split down the middle or have a specific opinion? Uh, I do agree with Julie. This is, was a Democratic thing. It feels like the Republicans are catching up. What I don't like, though, is when they comb through these uh, early votes and find out who didn't vote and then start to really target and harass people. I, and I think we have to sort of draw a line as to how much we can push voters to get out there and vote for the right guy. You know, I think it's going to become an issue down the road. You're going to put people like me out of business with the direct mail. <laughs> Not direct mail, but the <laughs> All right. And we'll reveal their wagers uh, next oh, Monday yeah. on The Real Story. I'm the, I'm the, and I'm and the you're the witness. witness. Yeah. You're the witness. Okay. Time for my take now. Whether there's early voting, absentee voting, mail-in voting, or physically voting by going to the polls, the important word in action here is voting. It's always unbelievable to me to see how many people just don't do it. Even though we live in the greatest country in the world that gives us the privilege to freely choose the people we want to represent us in government, why don't people do it? And bad news, it's only getting worse. In the 1964 presidential election, 69.3% of the voting age population went to the polls. In the 1966 midterms, 55.4%. Fast forward to the 2008 presidential election when Barack Obama was first elected, 58.2% of Americans voted and just 41.9% in the midterms in 2010. It's pathetic that so many people don't think it's important to have their voice heard. I know some people think their one vote doesn't count, but that's simply not true. After covering more than two decades of elections, a lot of those folks have been very close. So if you haven't already done it, exercise your privilege tomorrow. Just do it. Time to check in with Shepard Smith.